Hey guys, gonna take you on a little journey, a little journey of leaving Apple behind. Well, not Apple 100%, Apple hardware. Uh, I've been given my first Apple iBook, uh, that would have been about 2006, from a friend who used to work in an Apple store. And it was the best computer I'd ever had, and it was old at the time. And I was like, why, why is computing so much easier with Apple than it was just on a PC where it was always virus issues, there was always conflicting error problems, there was always problems uh, with the hardware and the software amalgamation of a PC. So I left the PC world behind and it was like a breath of fresh air for me. This is like computing what it should be. I can do everything I want to do without all the hassle of all the other junk. And to me, the mind shift of moving to Apple from PC and um, Windows was, it was probably about a 10 degree shift, but everything just felt more natural. So I'm an Apple fan, don't get me wrong, but that, that shift in mindset, it was just far more natural to me. As my needs progressed and changed and the world of uh, video editing, audio editing primarily uh, expanded, uh, so did my needs. So I ended up purchasing, back in 2008, uh, a, it was a 21 inch iMac, I think at the time. It's still running here. It's not the greatest, but it's still running. I do still have the iBook around. Uh, and then from there, I just ran out of processing power. I was using GarageBand and I was doing a whole lot of uh, audio promos and things like that for, for radio. And I just couldn't run what I needed to on this Core 2 Duo anymore. So I decided, after long deliberation, to get a Mac Mini. So the Mac Mini became, it was an i7, I think it was about 2.3 gigahertz. I got that second hand. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, well, I've got the inputs that I need, and everything seems to be all right. What I didn't know what was happening is that in the not-too-distant future, I was going to be doing a little bit more audio and video editing, which is the real hungry resource part of that. So what I ended up doing was looking at the stats of that poor Mac Mini, and it was running hot the whole time uh, when you're trying to do video editing and rendering. I'm doing like an hour-long uh, rendering session or an hour-long video, uh, which was taking about two hours to render. So I've got this kind of issue going on. I do some live broadcasting as well, and that's not so processor-hungry as, as video rendering is with the onboard's graphics card of the... Uh, of the Mac Mini that I had. So I've been toying around with the idea of, well, I, I really want a Mac that does what I want it to do. I want it to have all the bits in it that I want, all the bits that I need, but I don't want to pay Apple prices for those kind of things. And I've got a friend, Ulla, big shout out to Ulla. Ulla in Norway has built himself probably three Hackintoshes by now. And he said the process is really simple. And as long as you've got the right hardware to start with, and that's the key. So I decided to go down that road, and I'm enjoying the journey so far. It wasn't as daunting as I thought it would be. I've also managed to uh, learn more about computing and, and hardware and software and those kind of things. So I've still stuck with Apple. So I've got the operating system, which I've got numerous copies around the house anyway. Uh, we've got earbooks and MacBook ears, whatever they're called, uh, and bits and pieces like that as well. So I'm not moving away from Apple. I love the platform, but just limited by the hardware that I, what I, what I really needed, basically. And I didn't want to pay the crazy prices that are out there. So I guess I built my own. So that's a little bit of an introduction into why I'm talking about this video of transitioning between your old machine and your new machine and taking the things that you want with it, all the hard effort that you've put in to making your machine your machine. 